So I've been covering the um, the strikes in Hollywood pretty much since I started streaming on my channel. And we're finally now at the point where the strikes are over, the deals have been fully ratified, everyone's back to work. But as good as the WGA deal was, and how it was basically everything that they had asked for and it was just an absolute win, the SAG-AFTRA deal, while it was initially sold to the members as a big win with big, great like protections for AI, once more information came out, once they had like the full details, once they pushed out the actual contract and AI experts were looking at it, it looks like there's really not a lot of protections. I've seen a lot of SAG-AFTRA members who are like telling other people you need to get this specific writer in any of your contracts so that you have protection against AI exploitation that the main SAG-AFTRA contract does not protect. And I don't really think anything says it better than the turnout for this vote. Here we have from the SAG-AFTRA account themselves, Today, we close out one of the most important chapters in recent entertainment industry history. The 2023 TV and theatrical contracts have officially been ratified by SAG-AFTRA members by a vote of 78.33% to 21.67%, with a turnout of 38.15%. So, less than 40% of the members turned out to vote for it, and of those, only 78% voted in favor of it. And if you do the math, uh, actually, why don't I just pull up? I did the math right here. 0. 0.3815 times 0. 0.7833 is 0. 0.2988. So that's 29.8% of the vote that ratified this uh, this deal. And like I said, I was when um, when the WGA had announced their they had made a deal with uh, AMPTP pretty much right after AMPTP said they had issued their last best and final author offer. I was wondering if they had blinked first, but once we saw the deal with the WGA, it turns out, no, they they did literally get pretty much everything they were asking for. But in this case, I'm sorry, it looks, from from my perspective, it looks like sag after leadership failed them. We can go through the thread here to see what sag after themselves are saying about it. This contract is an enormous victory for working performers, and it marks the dawning of a new era for the industry. Getting to this point was truly a collective effort. With the ratification of this agreement, SAG-AFTRA members will receive unprecedented wage escalation, significantly improved streaming compensation, and the first ever crucial protections around the use of artificial intelligence technology. In the coming weeks, there will be further member education materials released to get members up to speed on the finer points of the deal. And they've been putting out stuff. They had, like, uh, initial primers on some of the details of the AI protections. But, again, I, I went over the whole deal... I've got that video up on my channel if you're curious to go over the details. So we've already talked about the, the finer points of how AI protections here aren't everything that they're cracked up to be, that there are a lot of edge cases where they literally can use your, uh, they can build a, an AI replica of you without your consent in, in specific scenarios. So like a lot of this just isn't protected there. Uh, a huge thank you though to each and every member of, of for your sacrifice and solidarity throughout throughout 2023, whether you were a strike captain, phone bank, volunteer picketer, social media warrior, participant in the wages and working conditions process, or simply supportive of your union's efforts, you are part of this movement. Let's celebrate what we've accomplished together and continue to foster the bonds that have been forged throughout this season of solidarity. And yes, it's very important that we acknowledged all the work that the members put in to be picketing. And I can't imagine that the negotiations were easy, but it really sounds like SAG-AFTRA needed somebody with better knowledge of AI in their negotiating because a lot of these people yeah, like right right here we said, it's more important than ever for actors to protect themselves since this contract won't do it for you in regards to AI. I'll be checking my contracts meticulously and using the Nava AI writer for voice, uh, for uh, voiceover. So yeah, here we've got the National Association of Voice Actors has an AI and synthetic voice writer, which I assume means you can't use my voice to train AI data. Quite a lot of comments saying less than half the members vote and decides the, face the fate of the entire industry comedy. That turnout is horrific. Uh, this agreement will be seen as one of the, as the one that destroyed the business as we knew it. Clearly not one person that voted yes understood what AI is currently capable of or where it's going. And there's, you know, there's some people are happy to see it, but, and, you know, again, the way that Twitter 
filters check marks to the top who who have literally just paid for the privilege but lots of people just aren't happy with this deal and as i talked about in my last segment on it before the deal was done there were criticisms that i had of sag after that i held my tongue on uh, like in particular the um their rule on the halloween costumes which i thought was absurd but i wasn't going to like speak out on it in the middle of a strike to you know as uh, whatever influence i have which is none but still i didn't want to carry that implication the, the the perception that i was doing something to undermine the strikes but the strikes are over the contract negotiations are over and while there were some good wins in this contract the AI one is so serious because it's going to be used to replace so many actors jobs and they just they didn't do their due diligence in making sure that it was protected enough and it looks like when the amptp said this is their last best and final offer it sounds like they did you know consider okay i guess uh we'll work it out this week so that we don't have to continue striking over the holiday like even though sag after members had signed an open letter to the leadership saying do not give us a crappy deal we would rather stay on strike over the holidays than go in with a crappy deal it just sucks it's it's a shame to see and it's really hard to say how badly this is going to hurt the industry because the the rapidly growing ai technology is already getting to a a very scary place there was a post that i had seen this new ai technology where it's just really scary how they could just take a still image and throw on an animated wireframe and it just fully recreates yeah here we go okay High quality AI generated human videos are coming. Animate anyone can generate videos of anyone with a single image and a bit of pose guidance. This right here. This is terrifying. Now, the, the examples that they're giving here, this is still a work in progress and progress and these are probably some of the better ones because this is this tool isn't available to the public yet so this is just a demo reel and it's probably showing some of the best stuff and you can still tell like here the pattern on her stuff isn't exactly matching but it's it's close enough this is really scary stuff and this is what we're looking at to replace a lot of stuff that below the line actors had been doing before like, if you don't think this is going to be used in Hollywood, you, you've got another thing coming. I'm really disappointed with uh, how this turned out, and we'll have to see uh, in the coming months and years as, as uh, this new contract takes effect how it's going to impact the industry. So it's Axel T says, do you think AI is going to take over the world? No, not in the classic sci-fi sense of the uh, the singularity where it recreates itself and, and and improves on itself more rapidly than humans can deal with. Uh, I think what we're seeing in terms of what AI is being used to do now, again, when we say AI, that refers to a broad range of different uh, technologies that are being developed. And oftentimes it specifically is referring to uh, neural net learning, which is, you know, just it's basically it's being trained on pattern recognition at that point. The real concern for AI is not that it is going to take over humanity, right? I think the big concern is who is benefiting from the development of AI and who is getting left out, right? Like people often point to Star Trek and say the only reason that that Star Trek socialism works is because they've got the replicator. And so they are in a post scarcity society because of that, right? But in reality, it's not just that Star Trek has replicator technology that allows them to be in a post scarcity society. They had to change their society so that when the replicator technology came around, it was in use for everyone versus what we've got now is we have a bunch of billionaire tech bros who are using AI to disrupt society with no care for who gets hurt in the process and with no care for uh, any kind of uh, systems in place to make sure that people can still afford to live.
and it, it's ultimately a problem of capitalism. Uh, Admiral Paka says, if we had a replicator today, it would only be available to delete. Yes. I mean, and we've got uh, 3D printers, which a, a lot of them are like commercially available to like if you get a, a, a lower end one, you know, uh, most people, if they save up a little bit of money, they can get one or you can rent one at like a makerspace. There, but that's not like a full replicator. It's still a case of if we had a full replicator that could literally turn any matter into any other matter. Yeah, that would absolutely in today's world be something that the elites controlled and made sure that not everyone else had access to. Yeah, it's not just that the technology exi technology exists, it's who has control of it, who gets to benefit from it. And that is not something that can just be fixed with technology. That's something that has to be fixed on a social and political level. I think that's the real concern with AI. Like I have said before, you don't hate AI, you hate capitalism. And that's really the, the ultimate problem here. I think that in a world where it wasn't a bunch of trillion dollar movie studios making decisions on what movies get to get made in a situation where you had people just given their own tools to make the art that they want without having to sell it to a big studio to to distribute in a world where basically every film was an indie film i don't think ai would be a concern I don't think AI would be stealing people's jobs in that case. I kind of envision a society in which making a film doesn't threaten or really give jobs either. It's just, we want to make a film, we go and make the film. Now, that's pretty utopian of me. I am not the most well-versed in, like, say, Marxist theory or anything like that. I just... I like things that are good and I don't like things that are bad. That's my politics, basically. Hey, thanks for watching. Your view means a lot. Don't forget to toss me a like and subscribe and ring the bell. I stream Mondays and Fridays at 5 p.m. Pacific and Sundays at 2 p.m. So catch me live and join in on the convo. You can find all my socials in the description below. And thank you to all my patrons with a very special shout out to my whale shark tier patron Ryan D and my anemone friend tier patron Piftle Cakes. Your support means the world. Catch you next time.